Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and to the 12 days of EP, we are on day two. I did say all 12 videos were gonna be holiday content, but I do have a lot of subscribers that also subscribe to BoxyCharm. So some of the people that watch my video, and if you're watching this video, you may or may not already be subscribed. So I decided to do opening the BoxyCharm premium box and creating a holiday look with it on my try on session. So it's partly a BoxyCharm premium unboxing and partly a little bit of a holiday how to use the items in the box for a cute holiday look. In all 12 videos, I'm gonna wear a different holiday shirt. This one is so cute. It's actually a sleep shirt, but I do not care. And it says Merry and Bright. And it has a little puppy on it that looks exactly like Cappuccino. In fact, I'm gonna insert a picture of me holding Cappuccino while wearing this shirt because it literally looks exactly like him wearing a cute little snow hat. And then this part like sticks out a little bit. <laughs> And it actually feels super soft, like he's wearing a little shirt and it's also sewn on there. I think it's so, so cute. And I don't care if it's a sleep shirt or not. It's super comfy and cozy and I just tuck it into jeans. It looks really cute. I got the shirt this year at TJ Maxx. So if you're interested in the shirt, it might still be available. BoxyCharm is a monthly beauty subscription. So everything in here is a beauty product. They have three box sizes. They have their base box, which is $25. This is their premium box, it's $35. Then they have a luxe box that you get every three months, so quarterly, and that one's $50 and it replaces the base box. Super confusing, I know, but those are the three box sizes. This is the premium box for $35 and on their website right now, they keep changing it, but right now it says the retail value is $215 or more. In this box, they promise six to seven items and you get to customize one. The one that I customized, I wasn't that excited about any option, but they did have these like glitter crayon pens and that's what I decided to customize because I love glitter. So let's open her up and see what else I got. This is the Bubbles and Glitz box. So it's very New Year's themed, a lot of hopefully shimmer in here that we can use for a cute holiday look. My variation is number seven, and unfortunately they used a different shipper this time. They used OMS Worldwide. I still got my package pretty quickly, so I'm not complaining about the new shipper, but they don't have the weight listed. So I have no idea what the weight of my box was, unfortunately, and if you got your shipped OMS Worldwide, probably doesn't show the weight either. Right on top, I have the True and Luscious Lucky Glow Bronze and Highlight Palette. I have never heard of True and Luscious, it does say vegan, cruelty-free, safety tested on the back. And this says made in Taiwan on it. Interesting. The shades look really interesting. They actually have photos of the shades on the back with the name underneath. And then let's look at them actually in the pan. It does come with a mirror as well. So we have some really cool shades. This is pretty. I think this is really pretty. This one is weird. It has like little reflective mermaid colors in it. Really cool, let's see. Oh, it just kind of adds like a little pink and green shimmer inside of the highlighter. So gorgeous. Okay, I'm happy, I'm excited to try this. I'm not a highlighter girl, so I'm not 100% sure how useful this will be for me. Also, looking at these, it looks like these aren't too shade inclusive. These look really close to me. One's just a little bit warmer. Yeah, so they're pretty light. I think if you had darker skin than I have, this would not be the palette for you. This is pretty light, but otherwise they're pretty and they're swatching really nicely on my wrist. So I don't know if you can see it back there, but we'll do a close up when we do the try on session and we talk about it. Right away, I know my box is not cruelty free because this used to be my favorite skincare brand. Glam Glow used to be my favorite skincare brand until I went cruelty free and I had to start replacing their products. They do have great products, but unfortunately they just are not a cruelty-free company. They are paraben-free, mineral oil-free, phthalate-free, and petroleum-free. And that's one of the things that I loved is that they were petroleum and mineral oil-free. So Glam Glow is one of those that I don't really use anymore. I'm still gonna use these because I feel like it's wasteful to throw them away, but they're very cool. This one has like a lace look to it. And then this looks kind of like a masquerade mask. I don't know if you can really tell, maybe if I put you guys closer up. So we have some really unusual masks. I'll probably pick one and do it 
on camera for our try on. So we have the Eye Boost Reviving Eye Mask. It has hyaluronic acid, algae extract, and squalane. I do love those ingredients. Then over here we have the Glow Lace Radiance Boosting Hydration Sheet Mask, and that has hyaluronic acid, green tea, and caffeine. I also love those key ingredients. It's gonna be a hard choice for me, but we'll do one of them in the try-on session, and I'll talk about what I found out about both while I'm trying them on. Next item in my box is from Elemis, and I do love the brand Elemis. This is a cruelty-free brand. This is a Peptide 4 Plumping Pillow Facial. The only thing I don't like about Elemis is they they go in with the fragrance. They have a lot of fragrance in their product. Their ingredients really work though. What their product says that it's going to do, it usually does that for me. Unfortunately, this sounds like it's a night mask, a sleep mask. It actually says right here, hydrating sleep mask. I was gonna look at the instructions, but it literally says it right up front. And when I'm sleeping is when I want fragrance on my face the least. I'm still gonna use it, but I'm probably not gonna use it as a night mask. I'll probably use it just like as a mask before I go to bed, just put it on, watch some TV or something, and then wash it off. When you're sleeping, your skin is actually repairing itself. So that's when you don't want any of those things on there. I do think it's probably gonna do what it says. I think it's gonna plump your skin. It does say hydrating and it says plumping on here. So I do think that's what it's going to do. If I look at this ingredients list, I guarantee fragrance is really high up though. I try to look at the ingredients list quickly. So don't quote me on the exact number, but it looks like 36 total ingredients and it's number nine out of 36. So what is that? One fourth, 25%, 25, top 25% first ingredients includes fragrance in this one. Looking at what's left in my box, I realized that the item that I selected, that I said I selected at the beginning of this video, those glitter eye pens, is not what's in my box right now, and that's because I selected that for my Lux box, not my premium box. It's so confusing, we have so many boxes, but that's for my Lux box, so we'll see that later when that one arrives. But I got something from the exact same brand. This is the brand Rockins, and this is a brand that I've never heard of before BoxyCharm, so I'm gonna open it up and we're gonna see exactly what this liner is all about, but it is a black eyeliner. They say it's a coal marker pen and they call it big fat liner. I don't actually like the shape or feel. It's like really thick to hold in my hand, but it is a solid black, like real blackest black color. And it looks like it's gonna be easy to apply with that felt tip. I'm gonna let it dry for a second and see if it's also smudge proof. Like I'll rub it out and see if it's smudge proof at all. I won't know if it's waterproof or not, but I'll definitely check if it's smudge proof. Like I said, never heard of this brand. It does say made in China, and I'm also gonna get a product from this exact same brand in my Lux box. The next item in my box is from Crown, and it says all eyes on you, five piece Lux brush set. I kind of hate that. I'm kind of worried because sometimes they give us brushes that they say are like $100 or $80 or something when they use words like that, like Lux. So I just wanna look it up. Actually, it's not that bad. It's $34.95 for a five piece brush set. That's an okay price. Let's see what they actually look like and the quality. They're cute, they're white and gold. They have an okay weight. I don't feel like they're super weighted, but they have like, they feel like they're not cheap quality. I'm always happy to get brushes. And luckily this, they didn't take up like $80 worth of my retail value with these because sometimes when you get brushes in a box, they say like, oh, this is valued at $80. And I'm like, in what world? There's no way. In this case, it's $35. I don't hate that. $7 per brush. I still probably think that's a little bit high, but not as bad as some of the other options we've got in the past. So I'm happy that I got these. Last item is my choice item. And I do remember when I went in and did choice, my first thought was like, oh, we rich, rich now, right? BoxyCharm, because they picked a very expensive palette. And our only option was the exact same palette, but different color stories. So the one that I selected is this palette here from Viseart. I really liked this blue color here. That's why I selected it. The other one was a little more neutral. So I guess this means that at least everybody got a palette in their premium box. I do like that. This still has a lot of really like neutral shades on the top that are just browns. Probably really good for making like a nice smoky eye. But for me, these two colors are probably gonna get the most use. And then I'll just use one of those as my transition shade every once in a while. It is gonna be a little bit hard for me to do a full on holiday look with this. It is an all matte palette, basically. I'm pretty sure just looking at the pans, I haven't really swatched them yet, but it looks all matte. Viseart is a very pricey brand and it's also used by a lot of makeup professionals. I don't know why because I have never used it, so I don't know if the quality is really that much better, but we're about to find out while we try it 
on this video. I did swatch the three bright colors, the ones that I'm probably gonna like the most, this pink, blue, and purple. Look how gorgeous that pink is though. That is so, so beautiful. Stunning color, seriously stunning. Can't wait to play with this, but we are probably gonna do a neutral eye look with it. Maybe I'll use a little bit of the purple because that would be more like holiday look style. Like I said, this brand is used by a lot of professional makeup artists, and this is a very pricey product. It is $80 retail value for this palette. That's an intro to the box, but I'm gonna go do some research, and that's what I normally do, is I go, I research reviews, I research ingredients, I research whatever I can find about these brands, where they're made, are they cruelty-free, all of that good stuff. I come back with a naked face, we try it on, and I tell you what I found while we try it on. If you're interested in that part of the video, I'll be back in a few moments. A few moments later. I'm back with a naked face and we are ready to try everything on. So I'm gonna start with the Elemis mask. For the Elemis Peptide 4 Plumping Pillow Facial. This has a $65 retail value and it is a cruelty-free brand. Overall, it gets a 4.7 star rating with 508 reviewers. The positive say it's fast results, that it truly hydrates, and that it's a great scent. And I'll agree, actually, a lot of times the Alamos products, I feel like have way too much fragrance. Like it's always way too strong, but this one I actually think wasn't that bad. For how high up fragrance is on the list, I really don't think that it's super overwhelming. It would be something that if I was falling asleep, I wouldn't really be like annoyed by it or having any of that extra scent. The negative reviews, I read 50 reviews and three of those 50 said it did nothing for them, but pretty much everyone else was saying that they did see a difference. This is a water-based product. It does contain fragrance, like I said, and it is in the top one-fourth of the product ingredients list. It also contains a lot of citrus extracts, so it might not be good for sensitive skin to have all those citrus extracts overnight. I'm not gonna use both masks because I don't need to use both masks, but I'm gonna talk about both masks while I have one of them on my face. This one's only 10 minutes. This says 10 to 15. So I decided to do this one, especially because I put the Elemis mask all over my face. So we're gonna do this one and then I'm gonna talk about this one. So like I said before, these masks are not cruelty-free. They are, however, fragrance-free. Their retail value together is $18. For the iBoost Reviving Sheet Mask, the one that I'm trying on, it has coffee extract in it. It also has caffeine as a separate ingredient. It has sodium hyaluronate. That is my favorite anti-aging ingredient. And it has chamomile in it as well, which is kind of a soothing ingredient. Honestly, I couldn't even find this product on the Glam Glow website, so I'm not 100% sure if it's discontinued or not. Also, if you go to Sephora, when you look online, it looks like it's sold at Sephora, but when you click it, it says item not found. So I thought that was really weird, but I did still find reviews on other Sephora sites like internationally. It was only 24 reviews and it has a 4.3 star rating with those 24 reviews. The positive reviews say it has a cooling feel. I actually think it has a little bit of a tingly feel right now, but they said it has a cooling feel, that it's hydrating, and that has a lot of extra serum in the packet so you could also use it on your face, not just your eyes. For the negative reviews, it was about it being too big. I think maybe I have a big face because I think it actually fits my face perfectly, but people said it was either too wide or that their eyes wouldn't fit in the eye holes. And as you can tell, it fits my eyes perfectly, so I don't know. There were also a few complaints about it being soaking wet and so then it wouldn't stick to their face or it wouldn't apply really well. But as you can see, it's like sticking onto my face pretty well. So maybe they just got one that wasn't so good. And then the last negative is about the scent. And I will agree with that. It smells really, really weird. It smells earthy and some people described it as algae or mushroom scent. I believe it also has mushroom extract in it as well when I was looking at that ingredient list. I don't know exactly what the scent is. I can't put my finger on like actually calling it something. I don't know if I would say mushroom or if I would say algae. I feel like I know what those smell like, but it is definitely an earthy scent and it is pretty strong. However, it's a fragrance-free product, so that is a natural ingredient in there. Now for the Glow Lace Radiance Boosting Hydration Sheet Mask, this is a 4.5 star rating with 69 reviewers and a lot of people like that this is a two-piece mask, so it will fit your face perfectly, almost the opposite of what the other mask was about. Then they said they had soft skin or glowy skin and that it looks really cool while it's on. So all of those little lace strips are actually 
actually shimmery when you have it on. Negatives are that it's too sticky or that after you remove the mask, nothing soaked into your skin. So if you try to apply anything afterwards, it pills whatever else, your moisturizer or your makeup afterwards. So everyone said, even though it's a sheet mask and it doesn't tell you to rinse it off, you still have to rinse it off after using it. This product is made in Korea and this product says the serum is made in the USA, but the product is made in Korea. I still have that cooling feel, even though the mask is gone, I still have a little bit of that cooling feel on my eyes. It's not bothering me, but I don't have sensitive skin. I don't know if it's sensitive skin friendly or not, but it did like leave the entire area where I had that mask on has like a really cooling feel to it. I went ahead and applied foundation so that now we can use the True and Luscious Lucky Glow bronze and highlight palette. And I'm gonna bring you guys in a little bit closer so that you can watch me put the makeup on. For the True and Luscious Lucky Glow palette, I couldn't find much information online. On their website, they do say they are talc-free, vegan, that they have clean ingredients and they're cruelty-free, but not only that, they're Leaping Buddy certified, which means that the entire supply chain is involved in getting that certification and it's also recognized worldwide. This product retails for $46 and it's made in Taiwan. I actually wasn't expecting much from this palette and I thought, wow, $46, that seems like a lot. But after applying it, I actually think the quality is really there. It's really good quality. This is a small woman owned business. So you're supporting a small brand as well when you support this brand. And I really thought that it worked. I would definitely not use the bronzing shades as contour shades on my skin tone. If you were really, really light skinned, you probably could. It does work as a bronzer for me, but just very lightly, a little bit more of a natural bronzy look. However, the blush, it was really easy to build that blush up. It, you could see it on my cheeks. Definitely with just two applications, I saw a significant difference from when I just used it with one application. The highlighter as well was very blendable, so I do think that that one could work for multiple skin types. I really wanted to use that one that had the reflex in it. So so I did end up using the darker highlighter, but I plan on using the lighter highlighter in my eye look in the inner corner because the Viseart palette does not have any sort of shimmery highlight. And speaking of that eye look, let's try to make a holiday eye look with an all matte Viseart palette. Actually, I plan to use that other highlighter palette as well. So hopefully you got that in your box. Everyone should have a Viseart palette, even if you got the other one that was a little bit more neutral. Busy Art Neutral Matte's 12 pan palette. This, they say they do not test it on animals, but they don't say that they're cruelty free. And the normal sites that I go to to check whether or not somebody is cruelty free, none of them list whether this company is cruelty free or not. There is one site that I found that I don't normally go to her list. She says that she speaks either directly with the company and ensures that they have cruelty free practices or that she gets it off the Leaping Bunny certification list. So it is possible that this is a cruelty-free brand. I normally don't rely on websites that I don't typically use, like that I don't feel like I go to them as my source because I can trust them. So for me, I probably wouldn't buy another Viseart palette, but it is possible that they are cruelty-free based on the information available. Nobody's saying that they're not. So typically a cruelty-free kitty or ethical elephant will literally say this brand is definitely not cruelty-free or I contacted them, they did not respond or something like that. None of those sites actually say they're not, but they also don't say that they are. And then the other site that I found said that they are. She is just not someone that I normally go to, but it's very likely that she did contact the company and got that information. They are paraben free and petrochemical free though. And this has a 4.6 star rating with 1,350 reviewers. Positives are that it's very pigmented. And as you can see, as I'm applying this eye look, it is so pigmented. I was in love with that. They also say that it's a professional palette because it has such a long shelf life. So I looked it up and it has a 36 month shelf life. That's really good. Typically, I believe it's 12 month or 24 months. So 36 month is really good. And maybe that is why professionals are using it. But I would say it's also because it's so pigmented and so blendable. And honestly, anyone could use this palette. It's very easy to use. For the negatives, they said the pan size is too small and I actually disagree with that. I think they're pretty big pan size. The palette is a little bit small, but overall, I don't think that, I think it's comparable to other palettes that I have or that it's not enough value and of course the price. So maybe they mean the pan size is small for it being $80. I think I probably would pay $80 for another Viseart palette if it was cruelty free, just based on how well it works. 
it's a lot of money, but I do think the quality is in the same realm as other palettes that are the same price. For the Crown All Eyes On You five piece brush set, I only found this on BoxyCharm actually. So it might be something that's specifically made for BoxyCharm. The retail value is $34.95. They are vegan synthetic hair and it is a cruelty free brand. And this product is made in China. For the Rockins Big Fat Liner, there were not enough reviews for this. Actually, Rockins is a clothing and accessory brand, and they only have six cosmetic items on their website. So I did think that was a little bit weird, but it is what it is. It actually worked fine. I did create a pretty good wing with it. It was easy to use, of course, because of the felt tip. It works really well, and it's very easy. It's very user-friendly. This product was made in China. It is a cruelty-free brand. It's also a vegan brand, and they say the product is paraben-free. This one retails for $25. I finished off the look with a bold red lip because if I'm gonna do a very neutral holiday eye, then I'm gonna put some attention on my lips. I also decided to do darker brows than I normally do. I usually like a little bit more of a natural brow look, but this is just like to step it up because I'm taking that attention away from my eyes when I'm not using my normal bold bright colors. So I need to put that attention somewhere else. I also ended up using the lighter highlighter shadow on the inside of my eye because I just can't do a holiday look without a little bit of shimmer. I can't do an all matte holiday look. So I'm gonna explain the holiday look because this is the 12 days of EP and this video has a little bit of a holiday theme. So I did this color here as my transition shade. So that shade is going on my orbital socket or orbital bone that is right above your eye, like the part that sticks out that's protecting your eye that is part of your skull. But you could feel for that and then you're gonna apply it right there. That's exactly where you want it is on that bone. This helps if you don't have a crease and it also helps if you have hooded eyes because you don't actually want it in the crease because then it's gonna disappear. You want it on the bone that's actually sticking out so then people can see that shade. So this one is a little bit more pinky. It's a peachy tone. This one has a little bit more yellow in it. You could use either of those but this one's more if you have a little bit of pink in your skin. This one is more if you have more warm tone, a little bit of yellow in your skin. I have neutral skin tone and I actually have both, but the theory is there are some that are a little bit more complementary. So don't shy away from something that doesn't work for your skin tone. It just causes a little bit more of a contrast when you do that. It makes your eye look a little bit more bold. So it's totally fine to use either. Don't ever stress about something like that. So I applied that and then I blended it up. So the way you wanna do it is you wanna apply it right on that bone as much as you can till you have most of the product off of your brush and then you apply it with a lighter hand above it so it creates like a little bit of a gradient. The next thing I did was pack this purple color on the outer corner. That is what's going to give me the smoky eye look. So it's causing depth by adding that darker shade on the outside. Anything that you put a dark shade on will go back and anything you put a highlight shade on or a light shade on will go forward visually when you're looking at it. So all I did is use this very small brush and I packed it on. I didn't blend it, I just pushed it up against that corner in the outer third, just like that. I did not use this brush to blend just to get that color really on there. When you're gonna do that smoky eye then and you have it just in that corner right there, one third of your eye, then you're gonna take a brush with nothing on it. Right now it looks like something's on it, but when I used it, there was nothing on it. And you're gonna go around the edges of the entire thing that you set down. So a little bit above it, a little bit below it, and then also on the inside from that third, you're gonna bring it halfway by just touching it barely so that it kind of like diffuses out a little farther into your eye. We're gonna cover that with the shimmer anyway, so it's fine if you don't have like a perfect line or anything like that, but it helps diffuse that color so you don't just have like straight lines where you packed it on. Then I picked a color in between the two that I used before. So this is the one that I selected. You could use either of these. You could probably even use that one if you wanted a little bit of pink to it, but I use this one. It's like the lightest option in this middle range right here. And I just did that actually in between the purple and the brow bone color. So that will go in your crease if you have a crease, or you will just use it in between the two and you'll go across your eye a little bit farther in than you went with that purple color. And you'll just go back and forth until that's blended out as well. After I did that, I took the brush that I originally put in this color, but I didn't put any more color on it. And then I went over the top 
again, just to make sure those two colors, the one that I just set down and the one that I originally set down, look perfect together. You could totally stop right there, but I needed a little bit of shimmer on my eye. So I went with the highlighter palette and I just used my finger in this light highlighter shade right here and I tapped that on in the center of my eye so that it gives it a little bit of a shimmer. Then I also took this precision detail brush or sometimes it's called a pencil brush or a pointer brush and I touched this and put it right in the inner corner right here. And that's just gonna give you more of like an awake appearance and you just need a tiny bit. When you're using highlighter right there, you don't wanna go too crazy. I mean, you can, but it's very noticeable if you do. So you just wanna put the tiniest little bit in the corner. And there you have it, you have a smoky eye. I also, after I applied this with my finger, I did take the brush that had nothing on it and I did just like a little bit of back and forth in between this highlighter shade and that purple shade. I don't know if I really needed to do that because I thought the purple shade blended out really nicely, but that's just typically what I do with other shadows, so I did it anyway. So now let's talk about money because that's important. The Elemis product is made in England and it's a $65 retail value. The Viseart palette is an $80 retail value. It's very high, but like I said, these perform really well and this is made in the United States. The Lucky Glow Bronze and Highlighting Palette has a $46 retail value and this is made in Taiwan. The Glam Glow Masks together have an $18 retail value. I think that's pretty good for some sheet masks actually. These are made in Korea and the United States. So this one is made in both and this one is just made in Korea. The five piece brushes from Crown. This product is $34.95 retail value and this is made in China. For the big fat liner, this is the one that I applied earlier. So we're gonna test it to make sure it's actually smudge proof and it looks like it is. This is a $25 retail value and this product is also made in China. Bringing the total retail value of my box to $268.95 and I spent $35 on this box. But what is the value to me? What am I going to keep and use? I do think this palette is overpriced. It's $46, but you're supporting a small business. They're a cruelty-free brand and I love that. And I do think they performed well. I just don't know that they performed $46 well, but it's going in the keep side. $80 is a lot of money. I think that we're lucky that we got this palette in BoxyCharm and we did not have to pay full price for it because this is a steal in BoxyCharm. To get this for $35, it is probably one of the best performing palettes that I've ever received in a subscription box. I'm very happy that I got it. I'm not 100% sure on their cruelty-free status. They don't even say they're cruelty-free on their site. They say, we do not test on animals. That's technically not the same as cruelty free. I personally, I've looked this brand up before because I've wanted to purchase the products and I just chose not to because I did not find enough information to prove to me that they are cruelty free, but that doesn't mean that they're not. I'm glad that I got it. I'm definitely gonna still use it. It's an amazing palette. So it is in the key pile, but with that asterisk on it. The same thing goes for this product. It's definitely not cruelty free. I actually had to drop them when I turned cruelty free. I did love this brand and I do think that they're quality products. I'm not gonna throw them away, I am gonna use them. So I'm gonna put them on this side because I am gonna get my value out of them. However, they have that same asterisk that I'm not gonna purchase them again because they're not cruelty free, but I will be using them. For the crown brush set, they're not anything stellar. I'm always happy to get brushes. I always think it's useful to get brushes. And I appreciate that they didn't tell me that these brushes are worth 80 or $100. Trying to pile them over here, but they are going over on this side. We have a man down, but we're just gonna leave that because we still have two more products to put over here. For the LMS Peptide 4 Plumping Pillow Facial, it felt pretty good actually. I never even washed it off. I just put my makeup over it and it felt really nice. I might use this as a day serum instead of a night serum. We'll see if it does anything as a day serum. For the Rockin's Big Fat Liner, I'm not mad about it, but this is probably my least favorite item that I got. And it just has a cheap feel to it. Even the container has a cheap feel. And then it went on really black. I don't know, it just didn't stay as black as I expected it. I'm of course gonna still use it. Normally not my favorite to have as thick of a barrel to hold onto though. I do like a little bit of a thinner feel, but it's pretty easy to apply, especially if you're not 
good at applying liquid eyeliner. So it is gonna go over here, and that means that the total value to me is the $268.95 because I decided I'm gonna use all of it. Overall though, even though I'm gonna use it all, that it's not really an exciting box. It wasn't really like, oh my gosh. I think the Viseart palette basically carried the box because the rest of the items feel a lot more like filler items. This palette was really nice, but I just definitely don't think that it has that $46 value, but I am gonna use it all, so I definitely got my money's worth. I am happy in the end. I just don't feel that like excitement that some of the other boxes have given me in the past. And that just happens. It's the way of subscription boxes. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about this variation and this box? Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.